Hello, and welcome to Hot and Heavy, the Elaine Bennis podcast. I'm your host, Shivani Desai. Today, I'll be talking about Season 5, Episode 18, The Raincoats, Part 2. Hello, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well out there. I'm doing okay. I'm looking forward to getting through the rest of this episode. I'm also kind of excited today. The Puppy Bowl commercials that I shot a few months ago, they're live now. So I was able to share them today and they turned out really cute. Just really, just really excited to be part of that campaign with Wayfair and Puppy Bowl. It was super fun. And yeah, it's always just feels good when you can share your work. Other than that, um, another huge important thing in my life, Beyonce just announced she's going on tour this year for Renaissance, one of my absolute favorite records of hers. Although she is not coming to Denver. (laughs) Um, I looked at all the tour dates and I was like, seriously, Beyonce, what do you have against Denver? Uh, Maybe it's singing in the altitude. I wonder. I wonder, right? You know, there should be a reason. Denver is a pretty big town, obviously. It's a huge city. And most major acts come through here. So it's very curious that she's not. Although Depeche Mode is not coming through Denver either. I am going to San Jose to see them because I do not miss Depeche Mode when they are on tour. It's not gonna it's not gonna happen. There's no oh, they're not coming to Denver. So I can't go. No, I will go. I will travel to see my Depeche Mode. So hmm, I'm gonna have to figure that out because I'm not missing Beyonce on tour. I've seen her once after she came out with lemonade and it was incredible. Anyway, super excited about that. Puppy Bowl, Beyonce tour. I mean, come on. Oh, and Madonna's coming on tour too. I, I've i never seen Madonna live and it's kind of like she was the artist when I was growing up. You know, I love Madonna. I mean, so many iconic songs. I have so many memories to her songs growing up. So that's kind of like a, I need to see her before she retires uh, and doesn't tour again. So I really want to see Madonna. So yeah, I think I'm going to be kind of going on a concert tour this year. (laughs) Hopefully mostly in Denver, but definitely in San Jose for Depeche Mode. I'm going to have to travel to see Beyonce. Uh, Madonna is coming to Denver, so I will uh, try and get tickets to her show. But anyway, that's all that's going on with me. Why don't we get into the second half of The Raincoats? The synopsis for part two is as follows. Elaine is disturbed that her boyfriend Aaron is more interested in being with the Seinfelds than her. Newman busts Jerry for making out with Rachel during Schindler's List. Morty's return to trench coat sales causes the Seinfelds to miss their flight to Paris. George uses their unused tickets to fly himself and little brother to Paris to reunite the boy with his father. George's sale of his dad's moth-ridden cabana clothes scuttles Kramer and Morty's deal. This episode was written by Tom Gamble and Max Pross. And for the second half, curiously, they have Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld as uh, writers as well. All right, so we start part two at a movie theater. We see the audience of a movie theater. The camera is slowly panning up. We can hear Schindler's List playing in the background. People are emotional. They're crying. They look so sad. And then we see the reveal of Jerry and Rachel hardcore making out. And then we further reveal that Newman is a few rows behind them, just disgusted. Next, we're at Jerry's apartment. Jerry returns from his date, and his parents ask how he liked the movie. And of course, Jerry has to lie, because obviously he didn't really see any of it. Three hours went by like that. Next, we're at Rudy's. Kramer is trying to explain the delay with the raincoats. Klompus, the key, Rudy doesn't give a shit. He's like, just bring in the coats when you have them. George enters and tells Kramer he's trying to buy some of his dad's clothes back because they're going on a cruise. And he invites Kramer over for paella. Oh, yeah, paella. Kramer's there. Apparently the Seinfelds are too good for us, George says. Eh, I shouldn't speak that way about your partner. Kramer says, you know, we're not really partners. He's only giving me 25%. George gets him all fired up because he says, that's not fair. You're doing all the legwork. Well, that fires Kramer right up and he leaves. Rudy enters from the back and sees George. Oh, it's you. You're the one who sold me all that moth-ridden cabana crap. All right, next, we're at Jerry's apartment. 
Now, Morty's all fired up. He thinks Kramer's getting too much. He should just be getting 10%, which is a finder's fee. Helen says, well, you're not going to say anything. Kramer enters. They confront each other about the fairness of the deal. They negotiate (laughs) and then land on 25% again. Back at Rudy's, Rudy is explaining to George the dangers of moths to his business. George feels bad and he gives him his money back and asks for the clothes. I burned them. Oh, that's good. All right, next we're at Monks. Yay, Elaine has arrived. Elaine is talking to Jerry and she's explaining, look, your parents are very nice people, but don't you think it's odd that a 35-year-old man would go to these lengths to see that someone else's parents are enjoying themselves? I mean, don't you find that abnormal? Jerry agrees. It's a tad askew. She points out that Jerry's not even doing these things for them and she can't even say anything because he's really just being nice. But But nobody's this nice. This is like certifiably nice. And Jerry's like, you're right. He's insane. They leap to Aaron being insane. (laughs) Elaine's totally on board. Yes, he's insane. That's what I think. Well, what are you going to do? She doesn't know. She changes the subject, asks Jerry how the movie was. And Jerry reveals he doesn't know because he was sort of making out. Elaine can't believe it. You were making out during Schindler's List? Jerry tries to defend himself how it'd been so long. They didn't mean to, but it just got the best of them. My take on this scene, unfortunately, this is really the only scene of substance for Elaine in the second half of the episode. I I like that she's bouncing her feelings off Jerry. She needs this validation that Aaron's behavior is so odd. I think, though, there was a missed opportunity here to have Elaine react with some more emotion to Jerry's Schindler's List makeout. I mean, not necessarily judgmental or negative. It doesn't have to be an argument. But I just would have liked Elaine to have more of a point of view about that. And just spitballing here, maybe referencing her own movie makeout or referencing Jerry's lack of PDA when they went out or something. Like I could see her being like, you wouldn't even let me put my head on your shoulder when we went to the movies or something. Now, I know I've said in the past how I'm not a fan of them reminiscing about when they were a couple, references made to that time, but she's barely got anything in this half of the episode, in the entire episode, really. But I would have taken an ancient Jerry Elaine couple reminiscence just to give her some more stuff to play with. And I think it could have been a natural thing to talk about because, hey, she dated Jerry. She went to movies with Jerry, I'm sure. So it would have been interesting to give Elaine a little bit more perspective there. All right, next we are at Jerry's apartment. We see someone knocking on the door, and it's Newman. Helen gets a chance to say her own, hello, Newman. She says, Jerry's not here. Well, Newman squeezes his way in and asks about their trip. Helen says, yeah, it's great. We went to the theater last night. Oh, Newman says, yeah, I was wondering why you weren't at the movies with Jerry. Well, she said, we've already seen Schindler's List. Well, it was a good thing you weren't there. (laughs) Well, that piques Morty's interest. Why? Why? Newman tells them how he saw Jerry and Rachel necking during the movie. Newman exits and Helen and Morty are horrified. Later in Jerry's apartment, Jerry enters and (laughs) Morty and Helen are right on top of him. How could you? You were making out during Schindler's List? Don't lie, Jerry. (laughs) Newman. He explains he couldn't help it. They started up during the coming attractions and the next thing we knew, the war was over. The phone rings. It's Jack Klompas. Says he finally got in after cutting his hand after we broke the window. The boxes will be there tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. I told you to send them express. It was $10 cheaper for the afternoon. I thought, what the hell's the difference? (laughs) So they're pretty much not going to make this flight to Paris. But it's a charter group. Well, we'll go someplace else. Oh, Helen's so pissed off, which I totally get. I would be so pissed too. But Morty says, I can't stop now. This thing could come back. Next, we are at the Costanzas. Frank is still wondering what happened to his cabana clothes. George says, moths? Moths ate three boxes? Then Estelle announces, you know what? I never liked those Seinfelds anyway. Kramer arrives for his paella dinner, and uh, George takes his coat, and that reveals Kramer is wearing one of Frank's cabana shirts. Frank freaks out, thinks George invited his friends over to steal his clothes. (laughs) He's attacking Kramer. Kramer says, no, he got it from Rudy's. And George is so pissed. That skunk, I knew he didn't burn those clothes. George admits to Frank that he sold his clothes (laughs) and gets bopped on the head. What do you mean you sold my clothes? I didn't think you wore them anymore. It's crow's wear. 
Estelle sees Kramer. Oh, I love that shirt. That's because it's mine. (laughs) I love the way Frank yells that. It's so great. You remind me of Frank on our honeymoon. Frank asks who this Rudy is. Kramer says he's the guy buying Morty's raincoats. Oh, Morty Seinfeld, he's a bum. Well, the whole deal's going down tomorrow and that Morty's missing his plane for it. George is like, oh, wasn't that a charter flight? And those tickets go to waste. Yes, I suppose they do. Kramer then yells, mouse! And they, <laughs> Kramer and Frank run and get caught in the doorway of that back den or whatever it is. Next, we are at Monk's. Jerry cannot believe George is going to take this kid to Paris. He's like, look, I get a trip to Paris. I go to the Big Brothers Hall of Fame. You know, I'm paying for this trip. That's all right. George says, I got lunch. All right, next we are at the airport. Kramer, Jerry, and Morty are at the carousel to receive the boxes of raincoats. Kramer is going on and on about how delicious the paella was, which I kind of like. You know, we've heard a lot about it. (laughs) And I do kind of feel bad for Estelle and Frank that the Seinfelds don't like them and they don't accept their invitation. So I don't know. I just think it's kind of sweet that the paella is delicious and Estelle really knows how to make paella. Good for her. All right, so once the boxes arrive, they see the raincoats have pretty much fallen out because Klompus flipped the flaps. He didn't tape it. (laughs) What a dumbass. Then we see the charter group in the background, the Paris trip, and George is there trying to give Joey some advice. Well, Joey isn't as sweet as we thought he was. He calls George four eyes and tells him that he isn't staying with them in Paris. Then he sticks his gum on the wall. All right, next we're back at Rudy's. Frank is upset for multiple reasons. Rudy burned his clothes and he finds out that George only squeezed an extra $25 out of him. That's what my life was worth, $25? Morty and Kramer walk in with all the raincoats. Frank says he retracts the offer to come to dinner. And Morty's like, well, we didn't go. I'm retracting that it was ever offered. I retract your retraction. Morty pushes Frank out of the way because he's conducting business, but... Rudy refuses. He's not buying clothes from off the street anymore. He doesn't want any more moths. Frank is still insistent. My clothes don't have moths. And right then, these moths fly out of Kramer's shirt that once belonged to Frank. All right now we're back at the airport. Morty and Helen are leaving. Aaron, Elaine, and Jerry are there to see them off. And Aaron is just distraught. Are you sure you can't stay any longer? <laughs> both Elaine and Jerry are like, no. <laughs> he hugs both of them tightly. They say, we'll call you when we get home. Aaron says, thank you. Jerry's like, I think they meant me. But so they leave to get on the plane. Aaron watches them. He goes to the door. Elaine's like, are are you okay?" He says, I could have done more. I could have done so much more. You did enough. No, I could have called the travel agency. You know, he wanted to maybe get them on another flight to Paris. Jerry says, "You, you tried, Aaron. It was too expensive. This watch, this could have paid for their whole trip. This ring could have been one more dinner. And then he just totally loses it. Water. They need some water. They'll get dehydrated on the plane. Get the side belt some water. Oh, Aaron completely loses it. My take on this scene. This scene is so funny. And it's all due to Judge Reinhold's performance. I mean, I just love it. I think he's so funny. So committed to how much he loves the Seinfelds. And here we see Elaine just totally get done with Aaron. I mean... After his meltdown about what he what more he could have done, the water. Um, so apparently this last scene with the I could have done more, this watch, this ring, that was a parody from a Schindler's List scene where Oscar Schindler laments about how he could have done so much more to help the Jewish workers. So it's yet again another uh, little parody of Schindler's List. We get some great face acting here from JLD. I love when she's like, why? <laughs> when he's like, water, they need water. <laughs> She's just like, what? The look on her face is priceless. All right, we get a quick scene at Rachel's parents' house. Jerry asks for Rachel, but her dad refuses to let Jerry see her ever again. He heard about his Schindler's List makeout from his heavy set mailman, Newman, and he doesn't want his daughter associating with him. The last scene of part two is at Monk's. Jerry tells Elaine that his parents came home to find their place totally ransacked because Klompus never fixed the broken window. Boy, they could use a vacation. Yeah, he says, yeah, their travel agent's working on setting something up right now. She says, how about that Aaron? You know what drove me crazy about him? Did you ever notice he stood too close to you when you talked? (laughs) I like that Jerry lies here. He's like, no, never noticed. (laughs) Newman enters, orders, pair of bear claws, please. 
Jerry confronts him about seeing him at the movies. Shocking brutality. Well, that was nothing and chases him out of monks. Then we see a tag where George and Joey are waiting for his father impatiently at a cafe in Paris. George sees an attractive woman and waves at her. (laughs) Joey just puts a butter packet on his glasses. (laughs) And uh, the tag after the tag is the Seinfeld and Costanzas find themselves on the same cruise. All right, I'm going to take a quick break and I will see you on the other side. You're a kind, giving person. Someone who puts everyone else's needs in front of your own, and you wouldn't have it any other way. But as with most people who have chosen the extreme selfless life, there is one thought that keeps you up at night. You could have done more. Hi, I'm Erin, and I'm easily one of the nicest people on the planet. No, seriously, I have won awards, I'm in the Guinness Book of World Records, and I even have a master's degree in compassion. If you're suffering from YCHDM, stop by Aaron's Pawn Shop, where you can trade some personal valuables for cash so that you can do more. Aaron's Pawn Shop isn't like any other pawn shop where you're not sure how much you'll get for your item. I hand over $500 of my own money regardless of what you bring in because, yes, you guessed it, I'm that nice. Then I donate your items to charity. Isn't giving the best? Even if it means alienating most people in your life because they think you're insane. So what if you can't keep a job or a relationship because you're constantly giving all of your time and money away? Aaron's Pawn Shop will finance your niceness until I'm dead and gone or broke and have to close down. Either way, you will do more and some complete strangers will be really thankful and happy. Isn't that what life's all about? For a limited time at Aaron's Pawn Shop, you will receive five tickets for Aaron's up close and personal tours that you can, what else? Give away! Ugh, altruism, am I right? Aaron's Pawn Shop. Terrible business model, but awfully nice. And we're back. Okay, so in the notes about nothing on the DVD, I thought there were a couple things worth mentioning. JLD had a quote about Elaine's relationship with the three leading men And it's kind of a negative comment, which is kind of on par for everything she says about (laughs) the three, the three leading men. So she says, quote, Elaine really doesn't know what she wants out of life. I think she likes Jerry because he's pretty calm and she's not as together as she pretends to be. She has a like hate relationship with George. For Kramer, I think she has an objective compassion like she would for a tall, furry animal at the zoo. (laughs) These quotes are always so bizarre and so funny to me. Um, but yeah, I think I think we can sum up JLD's opinion about Elaine as kind of pathetic for hanging out with these three guys, but also recognizing like she just hasn't figured herself out yet. And once she does, she'll ditch him. Oh, I thought this was interesting. They mentioned in the notes about nothing that that bedroom scene with Elaine and Aaron when she's in her little satiny nightgown. It originally ended with Elaine asking, you don't think that all this is a little abnormal? And Aaron responds, what's abnormal about being nice to two lovely older people that may feel a little out of their element in the big city? A dumbfounded Elaine answers, nothing at all. (laughs) I think I, I like that little couplet of dialogue. I think it would just reiterate how foreign a concept it is to be selflessly nice for Elaine. And I'm sure, you know, Jerry too. Like, I mean, this whole kindness of Aaron is so just bizarre to them because they're so the opposite. So I liked that um, piece of dialogue. I thought that was really cute. And now it's time to open Greg's sack lunch for part two. Well, the first thing in Greg's sack is his favorite scene. He says, my favorite scene is most likely the one where Jack Klompus calls and he says he broke Morty's window to get the coats. I just love that guy. 
As for Elaine, I love when she is still miffed about Aaron and is at the coffee shop with Jerry discussing it yet again. She's so bothered by his niceness and it's hilarious that she thinks he must be insane. This is also my favorite moment from her in this half. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot to choose from, but that scene is fun. Yeah, again, like I said, with that little deleted portion of the bedroom scene where she's just like, she just keeps questioning him. Like, this isn't weird. You don't feel uncomfortable. You don't think this is abnormal. (laughs) So bouncing it off Jerry, like she just needs that validation. And yeah, I love that they leap to insanity. No, he's just insane. Like no one could possibly be this nice. The next thing in Greg's sack is his scene swap idea. He goes, same issue, different day. Not enough, Elaine. I wouldn't have swapped any scenes per se, but I would have included her either at dinner with the Costanzas or at the apartment when the Seinfelds confront Jerry about making out during Schindler's List. We barely even see her. Agreed, Greg. This is going to be a relatively short episode because (laughs) we, um, yeah, we barely see Elaine. She really doesn't have too much to do. Thank you so much, Greg. I'm going to close Greg's sack lunch and move on. All right. So my favorite Elaine moment from part two, again, not much to choose from, but I suppose I choose when she asks Aaron, it's a very short moment, but when she's like, why? (laughs) When the Seinfelds need more water. I love that part. Um, And a close second would be the get out shove we get at Monk's after he tells her that his parents' place was ransacked. It's a sitting down get out shove. We usually get a standing up full force get out, but this was a half-assed, just kind of sitting down one. I liked it. All right. And my final notes for part two. Well, (laughs) they really front loaded all of the Elaine scenes in the beginning. And JLD takes a back seat here to allow Judge Reinhold, who plays Aaron, he, you know, she she takes that back seat so he can have a very, very funny performance, which he does. I, I so enjoy him. Now, my scene swap idea, there's there's just like a lot of padding to the raincoat storyline. Again, I, I should say I do enjoy this episode as a whole. I think when you have a lot of the Seinfelds plus Jack Lompis, he is one of the best uh, characters of the series. There's a lot going on. But I think, like I said, there's just padding to the raincoat storyline that could have been just shaved off. I would have liked to have seen Elaine get pushed into the more acts of kindness with Aaron, like just situations where she'd feel uncomfortable, like maybe, I don't know, this just occurred to me when I was making my notes, like, what if he set up like a spa day with Helen and Elaine, you know, or something, or maybe conversely, instead of just kind of being so baffled by this, maybe she tries to get on board with Aaron's kindness but it backfires somehow. Anything to give JLD some more substance in this episode. Overall, I like a lot of things about this episode, but I would have loved some more balance with the plot allotment. Ooh, what a fun term. The plot, plot, the uh, allotment. (laughs) Oh, I'll I'll, I'll get back to you guys. It'll it'll get better. Uh, The plot allotment. So meaning I just wish there was just more balanced um, storylines. And also more dovetailing of all the storylines. Like I said, if we could have um, involved Elaine more in uh, maybe Jerry's makeout thing or, um, yeah, everyone kind of getting involved in other people's storylines. That's when the episodes flourish. And we didn't really get that in this episode. Well, I feel like I just ran. Usually recording this feels a little bit like a half marathon. This felt like a 5K. (laughs) But you know what? Sometimes you need a shorter episode, right? So on that note, I think that's all I can say about The Raincoats Part 2. Please follow Hot and Heavy on Instagram and TikTok. On Instagram, you can find Hot and Heavy at at Hot Heavy Elaine. That's at Hot Heavy Elaine. And on TikTok, the podcast is at Elaine Bennis Podcast. And you can leave comments about the episodes that are coming up. I usually post a video to say, hey, give me some comments on this. So um, please follow and comment whenever you have something to say, especially about Elaine in an episode. Thank you so, so much for listening. And I will see you next time. <laughs>